Well, good evening, everyone. I know it's late. Come on. Good evening, everyone. I know. I, I do want to thank the, the California Conference for Equality and Justice for its tireless and consequential efforts, really consequential efforts to eliminate bias and bigotry and racism through education and advocacy. Now, I want to be clear that the notion of tireless here is not a knock against the Feldman's Performance Plus company, but it's about the spirit of... <laughs> Work with me. Work with me on this one. Okay. You're doing better. You're doing better. Um, I also want to thank the CCEQ for bringing us together this evening. Um, you know, it is an impressive evening when you pause and reflect on the stories that were told tonight. I, I go back to the beginning of the evening and listening to the words of Jean in that video. And then thinking about uh, Tazen's story. Sort of the bookends, if you think about the arc of life, really, right? Um, and as you know, the California State University, you probably know more about Long Beach and perhaps Dominguez and Fullerton, the regional campuses. But as mentioned, you know, we have 23. It's an 800 mile long university from Arcata, uh, Humboldt State in the north to San Diego State in the south, campuses in the San Joaquin and Sacramento Valley along the coast. Um, it's a big, impressive place. And part of the DNA that I've tried to instill and uh, accelerate really in the California State University campuses is this of inclusive excellence, the notion that um, we come together from different perspectives and we find that common humanity and respect and understand and learn and embrace the differences among us but find more in common than we do that separate us. Um, I must say that since the national election in 2016, the issues of the incidents of bigotry and hate and anti-Semitic behavior and racism uh, on our campuses has only accelerated and it's very, very worrisome. Uh, we have our work together cut out and I'm grateful that our presidents of our university, of which one we are honoring this evening and Jane, uh, are committed to helping do our part to create a different kind of society, particularly in this time of remarkable divisiveness that is being fueled uh, nationally. It's a serious moment. It's a serious moment for our society and our campuses are committed with you to not lean away but to lean in and to, to learn and to teach and to be relentless in focusing on these issues that are dividing society and have the university and the faith groups and organizations like this be that force that brings us back together uh, because without doing that we have a much more bleak future but I'm optimistic that we will uh, be successful in this and only doing it together. You know, Jane is the, I'm sorry, President Connolly is the granddaughter of Irish Catholic immigrants. Uh, she grew up in a working class home in the Bronx. I think that's in another state in another side of the world. Um, her parents, Thomas and Marie, had very little formal education. They were great believers, however, in the transformative power and set a high standard for academic achievement for all of their kids. President Connolly earned a scholarship to attend the College of New Rochelle. This is a, an elite college in, in, the, in the East, a Roman Catholic women's college, where she took to heart the Ursuline service ethos and decided to major in, of all things, psychology. Um, Knock it off, psychology, with the goal of working with special education students. Now that's an honorable goal. She would go on to become a highly respected professor and leader in her field. She eventually served as the dean at uh, UC Santa Barbara uh, of the, uh, the Gevertz uh, Graduate School of Education. And she was the interim chancellor at the University of California, Riverside, where I've had a chance to spend some of my professional career as well. And finally, and gratefully and thankfully, she is the seventh president of the California State University of Long Beach. She 
She had an inside vote on the search committee. I won't tell you who that was. She's been relentless, relentless in her support of equity and inclusion. And she continues to put those values into action. At Long Beach State, she's fostered a welcoming and inclusive environment that both inspires and supports, and those two things have to come together, the success of every member of the campus community, both students, faculty, and staff. A remarkably diverse demographic at Kyle State Long Beach when you look at our students, faculty, and staff. And during her tenure as president, the graduation rates for all students, regardless of how you break them out, low income, high income, first in their family to go to college, a legacy admit, all of those graduation rates have improved under Jane's leadership. And, and importantly, the dis difference, the equity gap between those who come from the margins of society economically to those who come from opportunity or privilege, that equity gap has gotten smaller at Long Beach State, which is enormously important. But perhaps inspired by my mom and dad or her siblings, uh, perhaps by her uh, early exposure to the Ursuline nuns, President Connolly has only just begun. All right, how many people know that's a Carpenter song? Come on. <laughs> Carpenter Center, come on, work with that, come on. You guys are, this must be late in the evening. So remember the Carpenters, but remember Jane and her goal like that of California State University as a system is to achieve zero disparities, zero, that's our goal. It's a big lift, but we'll get there. Zero disparities in persistence and graduation rates among our students, regardless of where they came from. It's not where you start, it's where you finish, and that is our goal. So I have every confidence she'll attain that here at Long Beach State, and it is my great honor and ask you to help join me in welcoming President Jane Connolly. Well, thank you so much, Tim, for that very kind, uh introduction. I'd also like to express my heartfelt appreciation to the CCEJ, to my fellow honorees. How amazing are they, really? Uh, yes. And, <laughs> and to all of you here tonight, I'm really humbled and grateful for the recognition. Special thanks go, of course, to my husband, Dr. Kali Conley, uh, who is really always my greatest supporter, and to uh, Dr. Mike Walter. I think you had something to do with my getting this award. So, And to the many people in the audience, and so many people in the audience, especially this group over here, who really helps me get things done in our community. So thank you all for being here. The primary purpose of the university, our university, is to offer students, faculty, and staff experiences that allow them to grow intellectually, socially, and culturally. Working at Cal State Long Beach provides me with many opportunities to see the great triumphs of our students, faculty, and staff, particularly the triumphs of those who have had to confront and overcome some daunting obstacles, and there are many of them. It is my singular privilege to be involved with this vast team of people at the university who constantly put people first and who devote their considerable expertise to developing caring, kind, and sensitive ways of helping all of us become our very best selves. As the overall population of university students becomes more diverse, which is a good thing, these students are also becoming more economically challenged. As this manifests itself in our area, particularly in Southern California, issues of affordable housing and living expenses become defining issues about whether they can pursue an education. As you know, our future as a society our future as a democracy and the future of our planet depend on the participation of well-educated and engaged citizens from all over the community. A university is the most reliable path to cultivating both those things, engagement and well-educated. So it's really incumbent upon us and we have accepted the challenge at Cal State Long Beach to seek more investment in meeting the basic needs of our community as time goes forward. Our university's increasing diversity is a particular strength, and it allows us to guide our students to appreciate differences as a path to creativity and effectiveness. Along the way, it's inevitable that some of our students will struggle to accept and value differences. As a matter of fact, it's 
our staff and our faculty, all of us, we struggle to accept and value differences in heritage, religion, gender, sexuality, and so on. These struggles, we hope, are teachable moments, sometimes painful, but often transformative. I am fortunate to be in the position that pushes me to live out the values so expertly promulgated by the CCEJ, justice, community, transformation, and respect. By honoring me in this way, you are by extension celebrating the very fine humanitarian work that is being done by many wonderful people in every corner of our campus and obviously every corner of this room. So for that, I'm especially grateful. Thank you and go Beach.